Hi, yes. I'm Keegan Connor. Hi, I'm Richard Rockage. That's a good interview. Yeah. Good. I'll interview you. Yeah. So how did you start musical theater? Um, I don't know. I just kind of started playing piano. Did you? Hi guys, welcome to Broadway Keegan, my channel for kids wanting to learn more about Broadway. And today I'm here with Richard Rockage. He played the piano at one of the cabarets I was featured in with Corey Lingner at a, that I did another interview with. And yeah, so Richard, when did you start playing piano? I was in second grade. It's a long time ago. That's a good Not that long. <laughs> I meant to say you've been doing it for a very... I've been doing it for about 12 weeks, yeah. Mm. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> Gonna ask the question again? <laughs> so Richard, how long have you been playing piano? For? Since last week, the cabaret I played for you. Keegan Connor, an original song. Thank you. I went to start, I went to take voice lessons and my um, piano teacher wouldn't let me do voice lessons unless I played piano first. <laughs> so mm -hmm. you were, did you want to play piano more? Oh uh, no, I wanted to sing more, but then the piano, then I, I, I like the piano because you could entertain people with the piano yeah. and you could do a lot more. That's entertainment. Uh -huh. And for what my line of work is, I, even, I don't even play as much as I used to. I hear everything mostly in my ear, and I hear things. And so I write on the page, and then I have to go play on the piano. So sometimes there's things I'll write out that I can't even play, and I have to go practice what I wrote myself. So it's a little, yeah, it's a little counterintuitive, but it happens. So we did a cabaret show together. We did? With, wasn't that fun? Yes, yes, it was very, very fun. Was it your fun? Yeah. Cool. and it was really very I played good. sophisticated. I well, love that song. Yeah. Yeah, favorites. with my song that he What song played. is your? What song do we do? Brown Eyes. Dark Eyes. I don't know. I keep changing the name. I call it Dark Eyes. Pink Eyes. Yeah, Black Blue Eyes. eyes. Yeah. Black mm -hmm. eyes yeah. Mm -hmm. Dark Eyes flowing like a river stream. Dark Eyes were brighter than we've ever seen. He made my song very up tempo and wonderful. It was just very That's the thing as a pianist that's saying you do you, you we collaborate on it. i yeah. got from you i got your original ideas and i got a recording of you doing it and i go what do i know that i can bring to make it better than it was and, and then even when we started rehearsal we've changed it we changed it two other times we put a key change and we changed, we changed tempo. Like the night before yeah but that's what we, but what i do i adapted to the performer because yeah. that's what a pianist should do we adapt to the star and that was you Broadway shows mm -hmm. or were involved in 17. Mm -hmm. So what was your first and last Broadway show? The first one was On a Clear Day You Could See Forever, which was a revival with um, Harry Connick Jr. and Jesse Mueller. And the, oh, she's wonderful. Yes. She can do anything. Yes. Um, and then my last one just opened a couple weeks ago. It was called Ain't Too Proud, which is a musical about the temptations. I've heard yeah. of that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, out of all your Broadway shows, which one was your favorite to be involved with? Favorite to, I've, even though depending on what critics think it's one thing, but the ones I loved like enjoying with the most, I really enjoyed working on Frozen was fun. Um, we got to do it in Denver first, and then we so we did like a tryout first. We went out to Denver, out and we traveled to Denver, and then we came back to New York with it. So we had like time in between to fix and futz with things. And then the other one it was a show called Bullets Over Broadway because it was a really good band. It was a really good orchestra and really good fun songs. Were you involved in? all the Broadway shows for a long period of time or a shorter period? Of My time? involvement with shows usually is from the time, it depends on the show, but most of the time it's before, right, um, maybe the show's been rehearsed probably for about anywhere between six to eight weeks, depending on how long they've yeah. rehearsed before. But then I get involved usually in between six and four weeks before the orchestra reading, which happens right around the time tech rehearsal starts. So when the, everybody goes into theaters when I come in. And um, we, do, we do our main orchestra read. And from that point on, we just um, start adapting and making fixes to all the orchestra parts mm -hmm. based on what the director and choreographer want. 
depending on how the show develops. So there's, there could be very minimal changes, but then there could be days where they change eight different numbers and you have to get them all in for the night, that night for that night show. Yeah. So while previews are happening, it's really iffy on your A game. So what are the op other options besides performing? My, th my philosophy in life is if you wake up every morning and you want to do something else, do it. But if you wake up and want to do theater, you have to do theater. <laughs> And you can do it in so many different ways. My biggest thing in the way I started out was that um, in professional theaters, I started as an intern. There are internships across America through so many really reputable theater companies. And uh, even if you want to be a performer, even if you don't, learn to do as much as you can in the theater. Yeah. Learn to do lighting, learn to paint sets, learn to sew costumes. Do all of that because it just makes you know what your niche in the business is. Usher, if you can't do anything else, pass out programs. You have to be well-rounded. You'd be well-rounded yeah. and you have to have the desire because that's what keeps pushing you. What are some tips for kids who sing with the pianos who aren't very experienced with singing the piano? While you're working with your pianos, make sure you the song's in the right key. <laughs> um, because as a, as, as a kid's voice develops into adulthood, you want to make sure that the notes you're singing aren't putting any strain on anything that's developing. You don't want to really hurt yourself. Number one, but when you're talking to a, a pianist and you're going over music, make sure you're respectful of them. If you're wrong and loud, then quiet and right. Okay. okay. I think of what the world could be, a vision of the one I see. That's it! That's it, that's all it is. Great. Make sure also if you want to do any tempo changes, they know that in advance. Let them know what you what you what your version of the song is going to be. Um, but those are the, those are my two big things. Also, come in knowing the song, and also have some direction where you would like to go with the song, especially yeah. if you're auditioning. What would be some advice that you have for anybody who wants to become a piano player? Practice, but learn the repertoire. Go through. You play everything you can. You get vocal selection books. You go to your local library. Utilize it. Get vocal scores out. I learned how to do orchestration mostly by listening to Broadway cast recordings because if you get something called the vocal score, which is the entire show, you follow along with that score and it will match what the cast recording is and you learn to play with it. You learn to go and you play what you're hearing, you play the piano part with it. It makes you learn the literature. Most, a lot of people say, I only do pop musicals, I only do these shows. Do all of them, learn everything. Learn Rodgers and Hammerstein, learn Jason Robert Brown, learn everything, A to Z. Anything you get your hands on, Listen also, be very cautious at listening. Make sure you know what you're hearing. What is one musical that you desire to be involved with? My favorite show is Hello Dolly and I've done it, but anything that's new I love because when something's new and hasn't been done, so you get to yeah. put your spin on it. You get you get to be the first one to have that crack at that. It's your your take on everything. It's real. That's that's the fun ones to do. If you, or find something that hasn't been done for years and find what is the new way in our new current climate to talk about it in a way that's exciting to an audience. Because audiences from when Oklahoma started back. Um, 50 some years ago, 60 some years ago, it, that to what we do now, what's the new take? What is the, what excites it? What talks to us today? Because theater should help change us to be better people. So I know it's your first time in Indiana. It is. How are you liking it? It's great. So I have not met one mean, nasty person. Good, good. Besides, We're glad to hear that. Yes, besides me in the mirror in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay, I wake up like that. I too. can tell, I know. I know you're a 76 year old <laughs> woman behind those pigtails. Yeah. You know, I can tell. <laughs> We're always there, we are fair, and we will never disappear into thin air. Oh, two. Yeah, two. Okay. Well, thank you, Richard, for joining me in this. It was a pleasure talking to it you. It was a pleasure talking to me also. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for watching. Bye!